Hello and welcome to Purple Night Games. Well, this is a first for me. This is my first review, and it is uh, the Gene Steel Cult Codex, which comes, of course, with being Gene Steel Cult with a sheet of cardboard. <laughs> now, I'm not a fictional tabletop gamer, so I won't be going into my in depth strategies or how to use a new codex in match play. I'm just going to do an overview the changes in this codex as well as what's new compared to the last codex and uh, the chapter approved and I'll be throwing my own thoughts in towards the end. In this review I'm going to look at the artwork and lore for Gene Steeler Cult in this new codex as well as the new crusade rules but if you don't want to look at those and you just want the new rules for match play and, and free play you can skip ahead to the rules now just in this time here skip that time and you miss all that and you can go straight into the rules. Gene Steel Cult holds a lot of nostalgia for me. I first played Gene Steel Cult around about 26 years ago. Yeah, not long ago. <laughs> but just seeing this new codex again brings a lot of that back. I stopped playing 40k for around about 5-6 years when the new, well, well the old now, the last Gene Steel Cult Codex came out, that me brought, back, brought me back into 40k, and I've been enjoying playing them ever since. Well, another nostalgia because I'm getting a Zort, purely nostalgia reasons. <laughs> so nostalgia is a big part of this game for me, and the artwork brings a lot of that back. Games Workshop Codex artwork looks magnificent, and this Codex is no exceptional. With a dark and gothic cover, there is new artwork and recycled artwork from the last codex, as well as older artwork from 2nd edition Warhammer 40,000. But this has been remastered, enlarged, and looks crisp and sharp. They also have the heavy metal team has got a full painted range of models, or models which are available to play, in, to play with Gene Steel Cult. The law in the new codex is very similar to the law in the last codex. It's presented differently though. In this codex, it's more written in paragraphs. The last codex used a lot more sort of diagrams. It more builds upon what was explained in, in the last codex, but it does go over all the basics, such as the rival of the gene stealers, how one of them becomes the patriarch, then the life cycle of how they reproduce, and how they start to take over the planet, and how they start to influence that planet's politics, and then the end, the ascension. It very much describes gene stealer cult more as as, again, its own sort of hive mind. They are the scouts of the Tyranid hive fleet. And also about how they in, in sort of behave like insects. But also, it does cover the fact that the thing with genes to the cult is that either exterminated by the planet's authorities or the Imperium or wherever they are, or they're then consumed by those who they're waiting for, their gods. So, yeah, a very dark army and the law does cover that brilliantly. This is about creating a narrative. Your story for your Gene Steel Cult force. The new Crusade rules allow you to follow the path of a Gene Steel Cult army. From landing on that planet, taking over the institutes of that planet, avoiding detection, and then moving towards the Day of Ascension, when you rise up and take that planet from yourself for yourself or unfortunately sometimes you're defeated but if you've taken that planet for yourself the rules then allow you to move on to other planets to spread to neighboring planets and systems or if it didn't go so well to retreat somewhere else and start afresh so in this new book there are new agendas new requisitions new crusade relics new battle traits new battle scars as well as the mechanism for following your Gene Steel Cult force all the way to the Day of Ascension. You get to select a world to overthrow. There are different benefits depending on your current brood cycle. The agendas in the book allow you to follow that brood cycle. And as you take over planet and gain influence, there's a chance that your forces can be discovered and thus checks need be made. And as you gain control, there is a day of ascension scenario where your forces rise up 
and try to take over the planet. So this is just an overview of how these new crusade rules work. I am going to cover these in a new video and go in more in depth of the mechanisms of the path to ascension, picking your own planet, the new agendas, the new relics, and the new rules in general for, for them in more detail. So we'll come back to that in another video. So this section covers the new genes to the cult secondaries. As long as all your models have the genes to the cults keyword, excluding Brew Brothers and Unaligned, but your warlord also has to include the genes to the cults keyword, then you can select the genes to the cult secondaries. And the secondaries follow the standard rules for secondaries in the 40k rulebook. So for the shadow operations, you have the sabotage critical locations. Your opponent places two critical location markers in their deployment zone nine inches apart. You have the action that you must permit you must do for this uh, objective of sabotage critical, loca critical location. This applies to infantry, bikes and the Redactor saboteur. And within three inches of the of the critical location marker, you can perform this action which lasts until the end of your player turn. Although you must remain within three inches of that um, of the centre of the marker for the whole turn. Once the action is completed, the marker is removed and points are scored depending on which turn the mark the action was completed. If it was turn two, you get nine victory points, turn three, seven victory points, and so forth. Purge the enemy. This is an ambush objective. At the end of your turn, you score victory points in the following ways. You score one victory point if one or more enemy units were destroyed this turn while they had a crossfire marker. You score one victory point if one or more enemy units were destroyed this turn by units from your army that were set up from ambush or from underground this turn. You also score one victory point if one or more enemy units were destroyed this turn as a result of a range attack made by models from your army and the enemy unit was exposed when it was selected as a target for range attack. Now this excludes other ways of making a u an enemy unit exposed such as priority target ability. It has to be exposed as explained in the crossfire rule set. So Battlefield Supremacy, you have Blood Swarm, where you get one victory point at the end of your turn to a maximum of four for any of the conditions that apply. Either one, you have more models in your opponent's deployment zone than your opponent. Two, you have more models in your deployment zone than your opponent. Three, you have more models outside of, of, of either your deployment zone or the opponent's uh, deployment zone than your opponent and four all of the above next is the abilities and we have to look at the keywords and the keyword cult is important in the genes local codex but it's not too dissimilar from the last codex where when you choose your cult it actually will change that keyword to that cult you can only have one type of gene steel cult per gene steel cult detachment to remain battleforged. Conceal is the new version of what in the old codex was cult ambush, and it works very similar to how it worked before, where you can either set units up in this time in ambush or a set up in underground. Bikes and infantry can also set up underground. Now it's very similar to before but with some changes. You can either set it up 8 inches away from any models, where previously it was 9 inches away. You're unable to move but you can still charge and shoot as normal. But additionally now, you can set up 6 inches away from any models. You cannot declare a charge that turn, but you can shoot and act otherwise act normally. Which is fantastic, it's a big change. And will certainly limit the enemy's ability to screen. Further thing, 
is a unit that sets up that has the concealability and also has um, an ability which which operates in the command phase can use that ability when it is first set up from underground. When revealing ambush markers, ambush markers which uh, come with the codex, only changed them before is when you have first turn, rather than deploying in your movement phase, you now deploy in your command phase. Other than that, it's very similar than the previous codex. The unquestioned loyalty rule is largely the same with a couple of small differences. First of all, the way it's worded, it, it, with a, it applies with a failed saving throw. So this would mean if a unit would take, would get this rule that would take a mortal wound and wouldn't therefore not get a saving throw, the unquestioned loyalty ability therefore would not function where previously it would. The other difference as well, it, it, is not, it is a 4 plus save for characters, again the same as the previous codex, except for the Patriarch, where it's a 3 plus the Patriarch now. Crossfire. This applies if all models in your army have the gene stealer cult keyword and belong to the same cult. This excludes unaligned units and brew brother units as long as there are no more than 25% of your army's total points or power. Crossfire markers are applied when shooting with a unit with a crossfire ability. An enemy unit gains a crossfire marker if it's hit five or more times or if hit with a weapon with damage higher than damage one. The whole squad have to shoot at the same unit. All crossfire markers are removed at the end of your turn. When a crossfire unit shoots at a target with a crossfire marker, you add plus one to the hit roll. An enemy unit is said to be exposed if a crossfire unit can draw a line of sight with another crossfire unit and that line of sight touches the hull or base of the unit with the crossfire marker. The line of sight cannot pass through obscuring terrain features unless crossfire units are within it. Crossfire units add one to wound when the target is exposed. And if within 12 inches, enemy units do not gain the benefits of cover. So Grossfire looks at a great addition. Now another new ability, which also looks at a great addition, is the Summon the Cult ability. Units with this ability in the command phase get to summon back D3 destroyed models. Now it can't include any additional models, it can only include models that have been destroyed from that unit. And it's for Neophyte, it's a D6 rather than a D3. However, in a turn, you cannot summon more than the maximum. So you cannot summon more than three, usually, or six for Neophytes. So now we're going to look at the detachment abilities. So Gene Steel Cult units in Gene Steel Cult detachments, they gain the Creed abilities of the cult that's chosen. Also, Gene Steel Cult troops are objective secure. Very similar to the last codex, however, it's just been reworded and to fit the new edition, or rather the edition 9, which is not so much new anymore, but obviously the last codex was 8th edition, so just reworded. Next rule is Gene Sec, and this means you can only include each Gene Steel Cult character once per Gene Steel Cult detachment. However, for each HQ role taken up by a Gene Steel Cult character, you can include a further character which does not take up a battlefield role and still remain battleforged. So for instance, if you have a Patriarch, a Primus and a Magus, you can take an Icon Ward and that will not take up a battlefield role. Brood Coven. This is similar to the old Broodfather rule, in that if you include a Patriarch in your Gene Silical army, it must be your Warlord. Without a Patriarch, then a Primus or Magus can be your Warlord. No other Gene Silical character can be a Warlord 
or take a warlord trait. Next we move on to Brew Brothers. Now Brew Brothers data sheets have all been removed from the new Genes Cult Codex. To take Brew Brothers, you have to take a separate Brew Brothers attachment. Use the data sheets from the Aster Militarum Codex and you can select units that have the regiment keyword. Brew Brothers cannot have Warlord traits and cannot take relics. However, now you can no longer include more than 25% of total army as Brew Brother units. So whether that be power or points, if you do have more than 25% of your army as Brew Brothers, then you can no longer use the crossfire rule. However, Brew Brother infantry does, does gain the unquestioned loyalty ability and all Brew Brother units have plus two leadership. But compared to the last codex, Gene Silicon Brew Brothers used to have the cult ambush rule. They don't get conceal in this one, which is the, which is the equivalent. So they'd have to sit up on the, on the battlefield normally. And as far as I can tell from the wording as well, Brew Brother units cannot be objective secure. So you are losing that objective secure Brew Brother infantry, which you had previously. Now there are four pages of stratagems. So I'm just gonna go through and give an overview and highlight a few of them rather than going through all of them. Now, the majority of the stratagems are only one command point. There are a few which are two command points, but generally they're cheaper than they were before. A few of them are unchanged. Hypermetabolism, Rig to Blow, Meticulous Uprising, Return to the Shadows, Devoted Crew, Lurk in the Shadows, and Clandestine Goals are all unchanged. Blood Coven is now leader of the cult, and the only difference here is it applies to two HQ models rather than just the Primus the Magus. Grand Sire Gift has now been renamed to Gene Sire Grift, and the only difference here is the points cost. Previously, the points cost was relating to how many relics you had. It was one command point for one relic, three command points for two relics. Now it's only one command point, and the amount of relics that I gained is, due to, is determined by the battle size. Bore through, one command point. Reroll wounds for industrial weapons against monsters or vehicles in the fight phase. Rapid advance, one command point. Gene sealer, bikes and vehicles, when advancing, increase their movement by six inches instead of rolling. Dig them out, one command point. When within 12 inches of an enemy unit, attacks with industrial weapons, treat the target as exposed. Raking fire, one command point. In the shooting phase, Atalans and Ridge Runners can reroll hits against exposed units. Massed firearms, one command point. Unmodified hit rolls of six auto wound for a crossfire unit with all models shooting at the same unit. Legendary demise, two command points. When the Kelmorph is destroyed, it can shoot again as if it is the shooting phase before being removed. Reckless demolition, one command point. A model can use a grenade in engagement range and always hit on a two plus. And a modified roll of a one kills the model once the attack has been resolved. Genetic lineage, one command point. An acolyte or metamorph unit can advance and charge. Booby trap, one command point. This has been simplified. Any models take one mortal wound on a two plus when in range of a selected objective marker. Cover and fire, one command point. A unit with a crossfire marker cannot overwatch. 
Coordinated Assault, one command point. Select an enemy unit with a crossfire marker and they fight in, the co in combat after all eligible Gene Steel Cult units have done so. So proficient planning abilities are essentially upgrades for units which you pay for when you're creating your army. Now these can only be included for Battleforge Gene Steel Cult detachments. They all cost either one power or between 10 and 20 points. Each unit can only have one ability and each ability can only be selected once per Gene Steel Cult army. I'm now going to outline these abilities. Lying in wait. A unit from underground can set up within three inches of enemy units but cannot declare a charge. And this is for infantry only. Exacting planner for the primus only can use meticulous planner an additional time and can select a cult unit rather than a cult core unit. Alchemist Supreme Biophagus only Select an Arborant or Cult Core unit and select a, a Genomic Enhancement for that unit. Trap Sprung When set up from reinforcement, roll one additional charge dice and discard one. Perfect Ambush Crossfire unit only Can treat one enemy unit within 12 inches as having a crossfire marker and been exposed. From every angle, a unit can be placed in strategic reserve without spending command points and treat the battle round as being one higher. Meditations in Shadow, the Psyche knows an additional psychic power. Excavate, before the battle, if the unit sets up in underground, a terrain feature of your choice loses defense ability, heavy cover, light cover, and inspiring traits, but gains the difficult terrain trait. But you cannot select a fortification. They came from below, non vehicle unit only. The unit can either remove an ambush marker and set up from underground instead or when being set up from ambush and removing the ambush marker can make a move a free move action but must stay nine inches away from enemy models our time is nigh when selected to fight for the first time until a fight is resolved the unit adds one to its attack characteristic but this ability cannot stack with a might from beyond psychic power. If your Gene Steel Cult army is led by a Gene Steel Cult Warlord, you can gift one of your characters a relic. The Sword of the Void Eyes, this is very similar as it was previously. The only change is instead of D3 damage, it is now a straight damage too. Amulet of the Void. This has been tweaked. It now gives a 4 plus invulnerable save, and once per battle, you can declare a saving throw is a 6. Which is great if you desperately need to make that save. It still uh, means you, your opponent cannot overwatch when you charge, but it's also been tweaked to include set to defend as well. Presser's Bane. This now has a range of 15 inches, but all other stats remain the same. The ability has changed. It treats all targets as if they have a crossfire marker and are exposed. Wormtooth rounds. This is for the Kelimorph only. They do not get the Liberator Auto Stub abilities, and you select how many Liberator Auto Stubbers use the Wormtooth rounds. Their range is 18 inches, it's a heavy one weapon with strength 6, an AP of minus 3 and does 3 damage. 
the Dagger of Swift Sacrifice can now only be given to the Magus and the Sanctus. It allows the reroll of one wound, and if a model hasn't been destroyed, you roll a d6, and on a 3 plus, that model takes d3 mortal wounds. The Crouchlin. Now, this replaces the Psychic Familiar and allows one reroll of a psychic test per phase, which is brilliant. Also, when you roll a psychic test and both dice rolls the same, so for instance, you roll two threes, that psychic power cannot be denied. Fantastic. The Gift from Beyond. This has changed from a two plus to wound bonus to a full data sheeted weapon with a range of 48 inches, heavy one weapon, strength five, AP minus three, and damage three. The unwitting orb, psychers only. The site gets one additional deny a turn. It can deny from any range and adds one to attempts to manifest a malediction or wildfire psychic power. Cranial Inlay. This is for Nexus only. On a 5+, plus, you get to refund the command points from a spent stratagem. Also, you can use the strategic coordination ability one additional time. The Voice of a Liberator. This is for the Clamavus only, and it adds 6 inches to the Proclamation Hailer and the Voice of the Truths abilities, as well as any cult unit within 12 inches gets to add one to their leadership. As before, Warlord traits can be selected or rolled for randomly. Now we're just going to go through and have a look at some of those changes that have been made to the Warlord traits since the last edition. The first one is a focus of adoration. It's very similar to before, but now you can select a pure strain gene seal unit or a core cult unit within six inches and they can perform a heroic intervention as if they were a character. Shadow Stalker. This is the same as before, where you subtract one for attack rolls against the Warlord. Biomorph Adaptation. This adds one to the attacks and toughness characteristics. Previously, this added one to the attacks and strength characteristics. Prowling Adjutant. This replaces the Born Survivor trait from the previous codex. Once per turn, if the Warlord is a target of a charge action, after Overwatch, it can make a normal move of six inches. Alien Magistry. This trait still increases auras by three inches, but it also increases the range of Jackal, Meticulous Planner, and Priority Targets by three inches if, these, if Warlord has these abilities. Now per to natural speed. This is very similar to before. If the Warlord starts the phase within engagement range of an enemy unit, it can fight first, but also it can re-roll melee attacks in combat. There are no new general psychic powers for Gene Stealer Cult in this edition. However, there are changes to psychic powers than in the previous codex. There are also new specific uh, psychic powers to the different cults, but we'll cover that later in the cult section. And now I'm just going to go over those changes that we made to the psychic powers. First of all, Mass Hypnosis. Now Mass Hypnosis is still Warp Charge 7 with an 18 inch range. However, the effects on the opponents are now different. The opponents now get minus 1 to attack rather than minus 1 to hit. And rather than before where it prevented Overwatch, now that unit must fight after all other Gene Circle units have fought in combat. Next is Mind Control. This is still power 6 with an 18 inch range. 
but that's where the similarities stop. There's been big change this one. No longer do you take control of a unit where you can make a single range attack or close combat attack. Instead, that unit receives minus one to all hit rolls. And if the psychic power test is higher than their leadership characteristic, they receive minus one to the leadership characteristic, as well as minus one on all attrition tests. Psionic Blast. This is still what charge five with 80 inches of range. However, it has changed. Now you select a unit within range and that unit takes D3 mortal wounds. However, if your psychic test is equal to exceeds that unit's leadership, instead of taking D3 mortal wounds, they take a straight three mortal wounds. Now, if selecting a target, if targeting a character, the lookout sir rule still does apply unless they're within the engagement range of the psyker. Mental onslaught. The warp charge is down now from six to warp charge five, and the range has been increased to 24 inches. But this is this power has changed quite significantly, and now you roll 4d6, and on the five plus, that unit takes a mortal wound, and you continue the process minus in 1d6 each time, until either no fives are rolled, there are no d6 left, or the unit is destroyed. Now this used to be my favourite powers, and in, this doesn't seem to be as good as it used to be. Psychic Stimulus. With a warp charge of 6 and 18 inch range, this is unchanged from previously. However, Psychic Stimulus no longer allows the friendly unit to fight first in combat, but still allows the unit to advance and charge. Additionally, the unit can shoot and advance, and also there are no penalties for shooting assault weapons while advancing. And finally for the Broodmind Disciplines is Might From Beyond. Now the warp charge has decreased one to six, but the range is still 18 inches. However, this has been nerfed. You now only gain one extra attack in combat, where previously you gained one extra attack and one strength. So yeah, the power's gone down, however, it's not as good as it used to be. So with cults, you gain a specific cult creed and also the option of specific ward trait, stratagem, relic and psychic power. You can also pick a separate cult for each detachment. However, bear in mind that if you, your entire army is not of the same cult, you cannot use the crossfire ability. I'm now going to go over and summarise what you gain in your army for these different cults. Cult of the Four-Armed Emperor. The creeds are the subterranean ambushes and you get to reroll charge rolls and gain light cover against range attacks over 12 inches away. The Warlord trait, Inscrutable Cunning. Once per battle round, you can reduce the cost of a stratagem by one to a minimum of zero command points. If used on units within 12 inches of the Warlord. This applies to strategic play and battle tactic stratagems only. The stratagem. A plan generations in the making. This is zero command points. Yes, zero command points. Use a stratagem after an opponent has used a stratagem to increase its command point cost by one for the rest of the battle. Interesting, very interesting. This include this excludes the command reroll and can only be used once per battle. The Relic, Sword of the Four-Armed Emperor. You can only equip this to models with either a Bone Sword or a Locust Sword. It has Strength plus one, an AP of minus four, and Damage one. For its ability, you make four additional attacks with this weapon and hits of a six automatically wound. 
Psychic power, undermine. This has a warp charge value of 7 and an 18 inch range. You select one enemy unit, excluding flyers. The enemy unit then subtracts 3 inches from their move characteristic, halves its advance rolls, and subtracts 2 from charge rolls until your next psychic phase. The Hive Cult Creed Disciplined Militants They can shoot if they fall back with a minus one to hit and they can perform actions if they've fallen back or in advance and can shoot without an action failing. Warlord Trait Hive Lord While within six inches of the Warlord ranged attacks which roll a six to hit Score one additional hit. That does seem quite strong. Relic. Vokka's Talisman. When making melee attacks, unmodified wounds of 5 plus, ignore saving throws, including invulnerable saves. Stratagem. Fire Discipline. One command point. Select a cult core unit which is shooting then select an enemy unit without a crossfire marker that unit gains a crossfire marker and all models in your selected unit must shoot at that unit psychic power sympathic blast warp charge value of five Roll 1d6 and add 2 to this for each Hive Cult core unit within 6 inches of the Psyker. If less than the enemy's, enemy's movement characteristic, the closest enemy unit within 18 inches suffers d3 mortal wounds. If equal to or greater than the enemy's movement characteristic, it takes three mortal wounds instead. The Bladed Cog Cult Creed Cyborgized Hybrids Models have six plus invulnerable saves. Units can reroll one wound when selected to fight or shoot. The range of ranged weapons, excluding grenades, is increased by three inches. Warlord trait, single-minded obsession. Select one enemy unit before the battle. Whilst friendly units are within six inches of the warlord, reroll wounds against that enemy unit. Relic, mark of the clawed Omnissiah. The model gains a 4 plus invulnerable save. At the start of the fight phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within, within engagement range. On a 2 to 3, the unit suffers 1 mortal wound, 2 mortal wounds on a 4 and a 5, and 3 mortal wounds on a roll of a 6. Stratagem Xenoform Bionics. 1 slash 2 command points. Use this before the battle when mustering your army. Select one infantry or one biker unit and all models in that unit gain a 5 plus invulnerable save. Power rating of 6 or less. This costs 1 command point. For a power rating of 7 and higher, then this costs 2 command points. The Psychic Power Blood Vault Surge This has a warp charge value of 5. Until the start of your next Psychic Phase, any friendly units within 3 inches of the Psyker, when being attacked with damage 1 weapons, gain a plus 1 to their armor serve. The Rusted Claw, 
Cult Krieg, Nomadic Survivalists. Attacks with Amp Penetration minus one or minus two allocated to a model with this creed has the AP reduced by one or worsened by one. Units that make a normal move or advance are treated as having remained stationary until the end of your shooting phase. Warlord trait, Entropic Touch. Melee attacks on an unmodified roll of a 6 score 2 additional hits. Armor penetration of melee weapons the Warlord is equipped with are improved by 1, although this does exclude any relics. Relic The Nomad's Mantle The bearer can shoot, charge and manifest psychic powers in the same turn it falls back or advances. Each time the bearer moves, advances, falls back or charges it can move horizontally through models and terrain features. Stratagem Drive by demolition One command point Use this in the movement phase after an Asalan unit has moved, advanced or fallen back. One model can shoot a grenade as if it were the shooting phase. Unit the Atlan unit has moved within six inches of are legible targets for the stratagem. Until the end of the phase, the grenade makes the maximum number of attacks. So six for a D6 weapon, for example. Psychic power, inescapable decay. This has a warp value charge of six with an 18 inch range. You select one enemy unit and until your next psychic phase, friendly cult unit attacks against that enemy, have their AP, have the armor penetration of that attack improved by one. The Pauper Princes, Creed, Devoted Zealots, a plus one to hit rolls in combat if models charge, are charged, or perform a heroic intervention. Ignore any or all modifiers for combat attrition. Warlord trait, Xeno Prophet. The Warlord automatically passes unquestioned loyalty tests. Now, this seems very strong, it really does. You can also select units within six inches for unquestionable for unquestioning loyalty. Core units within six inches of the warlord can use the warlord's leadership. Relic Reliquary of Saint Tendark. It's an aura. Core units within six inches of the bearer. Receive a 5 plus invulnerable save. Stratagem. Vengeance for the martyred. It's a 1 command point. Use this when a character has been destroyed by an enemy unit. You add plus 1 to wound rolls for friendly units attacking that enemy unit. Psychic power. Last gasp. This has a warp charge value of 5 and a range 18 inches. Select one core unit within 18 inches and visible to the Psyker. Until the next Psychic phase, roll 1d6 for each model destroyed by melee weapons. On a 5+, plus, the enemy unit takes one mortal wound to a maximum of 5 mortal wounds per phase. The Twisted Helix, Cult Creed, Experimental Subjects, 
add one to the strength characteristic and add one inch to the movement characteristic. Also, unmodified wounds against units with this creed of a one or a two always fail. Warlord trait, bio alchemist. Add one to the damage characteristic for melee weapons excluding any relics. Relic, elixir of the prime specimen. The bearer gains one genomic enhancement. However, if your army includes a biophagus, instead the bearer gains two genomic enhancements. Stratagem. Monstrous bio horrors. One command point. Use this in the fight phase when an aberrant or a abominant is selected to fight. Each destroyed enemy model counts as two for the purposes of morale tests. A model can also frenzy. This adds one to the attack characteristic but reduces the damage of the weapon to one. Psychic power. Mutagenetic deviation. This is a warp value of 5 and a range of 12 inches. Select one friendly unit visible to the Psyker. Until the next Psychic phase, models that make melee attacks that hit on an unmodified roll of a 6 automatically wound. Myriad cults. Now these are interesting because you get to actually create your own cult and select your own creeds. Now however, with this you do not get your own specific warlord trait, stratagem, relic or psychic powers, however you can select these from the standard list. There are a list of creeds for the myriad cults, all with a value of 1 to 4. You can take any combination of these to a maximum of 4. However, there are a couple of the creeds that do say in their description that they cannot be used in conjunction with the creeds. Now, some of the creeds from this list have just been taken from the main list of cult creeds from the Pacific cults. However, some are completely unique to the myriad cults, and we're going to go over these now. Splinter Cult 4. This mirrors a chosen cult but replaces the keyword with your own cult name. Now, this is nice for narrative campaigns but has little or no value in match play. Agile Gorillas 2. This is the same as the second part of the Rusted Claw Creed but cannot be used in conjunction with the Martial Creed from this list. Toxin Agents 2. All melee attacks that hit with an unmodified 6 automatically wound. This cannot be used against units that are vehicles or monsters. Martial 2. Crossfire infantry models that have remained stationary when shooting an enemy unit can treat that enemy unit as if it has a crossfire marker but this can't be used with the Agile Gorilla uh, Creed. Industrial Affinity 1. Attacks with industrial weapons can ignore any or all hit roll modifiers. Alien Fury 1. Add an extra 1 inch to consolidate and pile in moves. War Convoy 1. Vehicle and biker models that would lose a wound, ignore that lost wound with a roll of a 6 on a d6. Synaptic Resistance 1. Reroll 1s and 2s for psychic tests. 
Cold Eyed Killers 1. Wounds of an unmodified 6 from melee weapons improve the AP of the attack by 1. Now this is probably the part most of you have been waiting for. I'm going to go through all the different data sheets and highlight the changes to the characteristics, their abilities, weapons, war gear and points. Now, the Titanic Frag Drill along with the Brew Brother units have all been removed so I won't be going through those. But I'm going to go through them in order in, in HQ, Troops, Elites, Fast Attack, Heavy Support and finally Transports. I'm going to see what changes there have been made. First up is the Patriarch, possibly my favourite Gene Steelcoat model. The power remains 7, but it's gone up 5 points to 140 points. The Ballistic skill has improved and is now 4 plus. I'm not sure why in this one, other than possibly due to relics. But strength is down to strength 5. However, its wounds have been increased by 1 to 7 wounds. For its weapons, the monstrous rendering claws are now Patriarch claws. Rendering claws seem to have been removed throughout the whole of the new Gene Steel Cult Codex. They're still very similar, but with now a straight 2 damage instead of D3 damage. And you can reroll any wounds, not just fail wounds. Now, this is interesting, as on a 6 to wound, it still gives a minus 6 to the armor penetration and deals damage 3. Familiars are now war gear and no longer have a date sheet. Once per battle, you can re-roll a, psych a, a psychic test. The cost of the familiars is down from 15 points per model to a straight 10 points. For the Patriarch's abilities, Brood Telepathy has been removed. Living Idol has changed, as it now ignores attrition modifiers, but is still a 6 inch range aura. Lightning Reflexes is now Preternatural Reflexes, with an improved vulnerable save of a 4+. Psyker. The Patriarch is still a Psyker and can now attempt to manifest two Psychic Powers instead of one, as it previously was, during the Psychic phase, but is otherwise unchanged. The Primus. The Primus is still power 4, but has dropped 5 points to 80 points, which is great, considering this unit appears to have been buffed. His Blizzard skill has gone up now to plus 2, where it was previously plus 3. Not a significant change, as he only has a pistol 1 weapon anyway. However, his toughness has gone up from 3 to 4, and this is really going to help with his durability on the battlefield. The Scope Needle Pistol has increased its range to 18 inches, but other than rewording, it, it's otherwise unchanged. The Bone Sword is now being reworded to the Cult Bone Sword. It gives the user plus one strength, as well as having a damage increase from one to damage two. The Toxin Injector has had little tweaks. It no longer gives an improved armor penetration on a roll of a six. However, it does give one additional attack. Now there has been changes to the Primus' abilities. The Cult Demogorgora, for instance, now only affects core cult units within 6 inches. However, where before you got plus 1 to hit in combat, now you get to re-roll unmodified ones for both combat and for shooting. The Meticulous Planner has also seen changes. Now you select one friendly cult unit within 9 inches in the command phase, and until the next command phase, unmodified wounds of a 1 get to be re-rolled. Magus. 
the mix has been reduced by 5 points to 80 points and the power value is now back down to power 4. The only char characteristic change for the Magus is an increase in leadership to leadership 9. The 4 staff has improved to strength plus 3 from strength plus 2. They no longer have a cultist knife but have a Magus bio dagger instead. This is a melee weapon with strength 1, AP 0 and 1 damage. Only one attack can be made with this weapon. Unmodified wounds of a 3 plus inflict one mortal wound, but this cannot be used against a vehicle or titanic units. Familiars act the same as they do for the Patriarch, which has already been covered. The spiritual leader aura has been changed and no longer allows extra denies to psychic powers and now, unit, now protects units from mortal wounds inflicted by enemy, enemy psychic powers. Inventory of biker units within 6 inches when taking mortal wounds in the psychic phase roll 1d6 on a 5 plus they do not take that wound. The Magus also gains an extra psychic power cast in and thus able to manifest two psychic powers during the psychic phase. Next is the Acolyte Icon Ward. Now the power has gone up from 3 to 4 and there's been a modest points increase from 60 points to 75 points. So yeah, 15 point increase for this model. However, the toughness has gone up from 3 to 4 Again, giving this character more battlefield durability. The Icon Ward's rendering claws have now been renamed to Cult Claws. In fact, rendering claws seem to be removed completely from the Codex. They have been changed and streamlined and are now strengthens the user, AP-3 with 1 damage and no further abilities. Blast and charges have also changed. They're no longer just like frag grenades. They have a 6 inch range. They are grenade D3 with strength 5, AP minus 1 and 1 damage and they now have the blast ability. The Icon Ward's abilities have completely changed. Bestial Devotion has completely gone now. Nexus Devotion has changed. Previously, units within 6 inches could ignore wounds on a 6+. plus. Now, core units within 6 inches get to use the Summon the Cult rule. Now, Secret Banner has also changed. You get to perform the action, also called Secret Cult Banner. This action starts in the move phase and is completed in the charge phase. And units within 6 inches get to add 1 to their charge roll. Jackal Alphas. It's still power 4, but has increased by 5 points to 80 points. Its wounds has, have gone down from 5 to 4 wounds, but their save is now a 4 plus save. There's been big changes to the sniper rifle, which is now called the Colt Sniper Rifle. It still has a 36 inch range and is heavy 1, but is now strength 5 and has a minus three to its armor penetration. Both of these have improved one by one. And its damage is now a flat two damage instead of D3 damage. The Colt Sniper Rifle does mortal wounds on a four plus in addition to normal damage. This was on a six plus in the previous codex. Now, the Jackal Alphas abilities. The Jackal Alphas is a crossfire unit. Priority target is similar but has changed. Now you select a crossfire core unit in the command phase within 9 inches of the Alphas Jackal. Select an enemy unit which is within 36 inches 
Each time the Elvis Jackal and the selected friendly unit target this selected enemy unit, they treat it as being exposed. Master Outrider replaces the skilled Outrider ability. You still subtract one to hit rolls, but also while within six inches of friendly Atlan, Atlan jackals or cult vehicles, it cannot be targeted with range attacks unless it is the closest eligible target. The jackal ability is new. This allows the Alpha's jackal to shoot and charge in the turn it fell back. Acolyte hybrids. They're still power 3 per 5 acolytes. Their points have increased to 9 points a model when previously being 8 points a model. But they have improved and they do seem to still be a stalwart unit. They can no longer be in unit sizes of 20 and the unit size now ranges from 5 to 15 models. Their toughness has increased by 1 to toughness 4. Hybrids now get frag grenades as well as blasting charges. Hand flamers, cut icons and one of either a bone sword or lash whip now replace the auto pistol. Whilst two demolition charges, heavy rock cutters, heavy rock drill and heavy rock saws also replace the auto pistol as well as the cult claws and knife. Previously pistols could have been used alongside most of these weapons. Bone swords have improved to strength plus one and damage two as outlined before. Heavy rock cutters are still times two strength, AP minus four, but are now damage three instead of D3 damage. You still need to subtract one to hit, but this weapon has lost its instant kill ability and still costs 10 points. The heavy rock drill, it has its AP improved to minus four. Their ability is also changed to automatically wound and hit of an unmodified 6 to 2 mortal wounds in addition to normal damage. This no longer suffers a minus 1 to hit. So all this and they've been reduced to just 10 points. Heavy rock saws, they are so far unchanged. Cultist knife and rendering claws have been combined to Cult Claws and Knife. It's a melee weapon with strength as user, AP minus two, damage one, and you still make one additional attack. Demolition charges are now two damage instead of D3 damage, and come with one additional charge, and are still 10 points. So one extra use for the same points. Cult icons now allow the summon the cult ability and due to this have doubled in cost from 10 points to 20 points but this is very much justified. Cult lash whips are now war gear and allow re-rolls to hit with melee weapons but cannot be used against monsters and vehicles. Acolytes also have the crossfire ability under a core unit. Neophyte hybrids. Their power is increased to 5 for 10 neophytes and up to power 8 for over 11 neophytes. However, they are still 6 points per model. There is an error in the codex regarding unit size. It is stated as 10 to 20 on the data sheet but 5 to 15 on the summary page. The data sheet does appear to be correct as the war gear limits work in tens. So for unit size and, and, until it, this has been clarified by Games Workshop, I would follow the data sheet. The characteristics are unchanged. You now replace the auto gun 
for a cult icon, where previously you could use both, both together. You can also have two heavy weapons and two special weapons for 10 models now, where previously you could only have two per squad. Models have both frag grenades and blasting charges. Cult shotguns are now a flat strength 4, rather than this just applying for half range. Mining lasers have not changed, but are up 5 points to 15 points. The seismic cannon has had some nice changes to the data sheet. Long wave is 24 inch range, heavy 6, the strength is up to 4, the AP has also improved to minus 1. For short wave, the range is up to 24 inches and the AP has also improved to minus 2. Like the minor laser, it has increased by 5 points to 15 points. The web pistol and the Weber have changed significantly. They still auto hit weapons, however now you roll 1d6 and if this is higher than the highest strength characteristic in the unit you're attacking, that unit suffers one mortal wound. The web pistol is now strength 1, obviously given the uh, new ability. And is up now to 5 points. The Weber is up from 16 inch range to an 18 inch range and is now a blast weapon. The Power Maul is now strength plus 3. The Power Pick has lost its ability but is now strength plus 2 rather than strength user. But the damage is down to damage 1 from damage D3. Its points are also down to 5 points. The cult icon allows the summon the cult ability, but you can roll a D6 for neophytes. Also, neophyte hybrids are a crossfire unit. Now this makes them much improved, especially with range attacks. Pure strain gene stealers. I was very much looking forward to seeing the improvements to these guys, and they have improved. Gene stealers used to be scary, especially in combat, but have seemed to be a bit meek and lackluster in recent editions of 40k. Although they're still not overly scary as a combat unit, they are much improved. The power is down to three for one to five gene stealers and seven for six or more models despite improvements their points are down from 17 points a model to 14 points a model their unit size is down from 5 to 20 models to 5 to 10 models their weapon skill is improved from plus 3 to plus 2 and they now have a ballistic skill of 6 plus. I'm not sure why. Their attacks are also up to four attacks from three attacks previously. Scything talons and rendering claws are both gone. They've been replaced by cult claws and talons as a single weapon. Its strength is as user AP minus three and damage one. The invulnerable save has also improved from 5 plus to 4 plus. However, pure strain gene stealers are not a core unit. I'm a bit disappointed with this one. I thought with the gene stealers and gene stealer cult army would have been core, but fortunately not. Next is Aberrants. Now their power has dropped to 7 for 5 models and again has dropped to 15 power for six or more models. Their points still have stayed the same at 30 points per model. However, the war gear is included in this. Now their characteristics have also been in buffed. Toughness is up to five, and they now have three wounds. So for durability, these guys are much better off. 
Now there has been changes to the Aberrant weapons. The power picks and the heavy power hammers have now gone. They have been amalgamated into one weapon, the heavy power weapon. Its strength is plus three, AP minus two, and damage three. So very handy weapon indeed. The heavy improvised weapon is still there. However, this has had some changes. It is no longer times two strength of the user and instead just plus one strength. Now the abilities have also changed. No longer do you extra attacks. Instead, excess damage to a model is passed on to other models in that unit. So, with this weapon having damage two, if you inflict that damage two to a model with only one wound, that damage would carry on to another model in that unit. Bestial figure has also changed slightly. You still subtract one damage uh, from attacks on the ab aberrant unit. However, it has lost the five plus roll a d6 to ignore wounds. Hybrid metamorphs. Their power is still the same for five models, but it's up onto power seven for six to 10 models, and now power 10 for 11 to 15 models. Their points are also up one to 12 points per model. The unit size has increased from 5 to 10 to 5 to 15 models. Toughness is up 1 to toughness 4. Bone swords are improved, but I've already covered these under hybrid acolytes. Metamorph weapons have been combined to one weapon, metamorph mutations, which are melee, strength plus 1, AP minus 3, with 1 damage. Metamorphs also have both blasting charges and frag grenades. Metamorphs also get a cult icon and lash whip, but again these are being covered under hybrid acolytes. They now have the ability Savage Amalgam, which allows metamorphs that were destroyed in combat to make their attacks before being removed. Hybrid metamorphs also have the crossfire ability and our core units. The Abominant. Now, the first thing to note, this is no longer a HQ choice. It is now an elite choice. Their power is also down from, from six down to five, and its points has also seen a decrease. It is now 95 points, where previously it was 110 points. Its characteristics have also changed. Its strength has been, has been decreased from 6 down to 5, whereas the wounds are now up from 5 up to 6 wounds. The abominance weapons have also changed. They no longer get rendering claws. The power sledgehammer's damage has changed. It was previously d6 damage. It's now d3 damage plus 3. And previously, you got minus 1 to hit. That has been removed which is great, so it's much easier to hit again with this weapon. The Abominant's abilities have changed. It no longer gets the Regenerative Flesh ability. That has now been removed. The Chosen One ability has changed as well. Friendly Aberrant units within six inches get to reroll their attacks in combat. The Mind Worm Familiar ability, again, that's also changed. Each fight phase, the Abominant can re-roll one attack and re-roll one wound. Beastial Vigor, this is very much the same as it was in the previous Codex. However, it's now been separated out into two separate abilities, Beastial Vigor and Alien Resilience. But these two together function very much the same as the Beastial Vigor ability did in the old Codex. Nexus. The power of Nexus is still the same at power 5. However, its points have decreased by 5 points to 50 points. The characteristics and war gear of the Nexus are unchanged from the last Codex. Now, the Nexus abilities have changed. Strategic coordination is quite different than it was before. Now, in the command phase, you select a cult core unit, and they can use the aura abilities of the Primus, Jackal Alphus, or Clamavus unit, 
as long as those units are within six inches of nexus, the selected unit can use its aura abilities no matter where it is on the battlefield. Now it also gets a new ability, Battlefield Analysis. The Nexus can assign a crossfire marker to any enemy unit. Now this seems very strong to me, just to be able to assign any enemy unit a crossfire marker in the command phase. Brilliant. Now the Clamabus. The power for the Clamabus is unchanged at three power. However, the points have seen a decrease from 60 points down to 50 points. The characteristics and the war gear are exactly the same as the last codex. The abilities for the Clamabus are much changed. The Scramble Array no longer inflicts mortal wounds to enemy units. However, it has retained its ability to stop enemy units from setting up within 12 inches when arriving from reinforcements. The Proclamation Hailer, now this has quite significantly changed. Now, in the command phase, you select a Cult Core unit within 12 inches, and until the next command phase, they can perform actions and shoot and automatically pass any combat attrition tests. Voice of Truths is a new ability. In your morale phase, yes, in your morale phase, you select an enemy unit within 12 inches. You roll 3d6. If this exceeds their leadership's characteristic, you choose one of two abilities. One, you can either prevent that unit from performing actions or two, you can remove objective secure from that unit, and that lasts until your next morale phase. The Kelomorph. Its power and points are unchanged. Attacks up one to four attacks. The Cultist Knife has been removed. The Liberator Auto Stubs have changed. The range has increased to 18 inches. Strength is up 1 to strength 5, but the damage is down 1 to damage 1. It has gained an ability. An unmodified wound of a 6 inflicts 1 mortal wound in addition to normal damage. The Hypersensory ability is a new ability, allowing the Kelomorph to make a move or to fall back after it has shot as if it was the movement phase. Heroic Deeds, Heroic Inspiration. Small tweaks to this ability. Previously, it affected any infantry. Now, it affects core units only. Otherwise, it is the same. Preternatural Reflexes and Gunslinger remain unchanged. The Kelmorph also has the Crossfire ability. The Locus. The power for the Locus has stayed the same at power 3, however it has had a points increase by 5 points to 50 points. Its characteristics has seen some increases though. It is now toughness 4 and its attacks have been increased from 4 attacks to 5 attacks. The Locust's war gear and weapons are largely the same with just some tweaks to the Locust blades. These now strength plus 1, it has lost its ability, however it now does a flat 2 damage. The Locust abilities have changed. Quicksilver Dodge has now been renamed to Preternatural Reflexes, but it still gives the Locust a 5 plus invulnerable save. The Bodyguard rule has changed. At the start of the battle, you select one Gene Seal Cult character, and that is the Locust's ward. While the Locust is within 3 inches, enemy units cannot target the wards with range attacks. Also, in combat, whilst the Locust is a viable target, Enemies cannot target your ward in the fight phase. Now, Quicksilver Strike and Sudden Assault, they have been reworded, but function the same way as they did in the previous codex. Sanctus. The power has increased to power four, and it has gone up 10 points to 70 points, but the war gear is now included. Characteristics are the same. It now has the Cult Sniper Rifle, and this is the same and is covered under the Jackal Alphas entry. 
the Sanctus' bio dagger is the same as the Magus' bio dagger, again covered in the Magus section. The Sanctus' abilities have all changed. Creeping Shadow now gives the Sanctus a 5 plus invulnerable save and enemies on a minus, a minus 1 to hit against the Sanctus. Soul Sight attacks automatically hit and the target does not benefit from cover. This seems very strong, I means automatically hit. Cloaked Assassin. Enemies cannot target the Sanctus with range attacks unless within 12 inches. Also, when in cover, the Sanctus gains an additional 1 to the saving throw. Sniper. When equipped with the Cult Sniper Rifle, the Sanctus gains the Crossfire ability and treats the unit it makes a ranged attack against as being exposed. But no longer gives Psychers Perils of the Warp with a Sniper attack. This is the brand new unit, the Redactor Saboteur. It is power 4 and 80 points. Its movement is 6 inches, weapon skill 3 plus, ballistic skill 2 plus, strength 3, toughness 3, with 4 wounds, 3 attacks and a leadership of 8. It also comes with a 5 plus save. Now with war gear, it has an auto pistol, remote explosives, blasting charges, a demolition charge and frag grenades. The remote explosives have a 24 inch range and are a 2d3 assault weapon with strength 8, AP-3 and damage 1. It is a blast weapon and if it's targeting a vehicle or a monster the damage is damage 3 rather than damage 1. Now we're going to look at the abilities of the Redactor's Saboteur. The first one is Deploy Explosives. This allows the action Plant Explosives, which is done in the command phase and is completed at the end of the movement phase. Within one inch of the Redactor Saboteur, you place a Redactor Explosives marker. Now, I don't know what that is. I assume it either comes with the model or you've got to create your own. But either so, once its action has been performed, it cannot be performed again by that Redactor Saboteur for the rest of the battle. And if the Redactor Saboteur is killed, the marker is removed. Redactor Explosives. You can probably see where this one's going. At the end of your movement phase, on the important charge, charge phase, if there's any models within three inches of the Explosives marker, you can use the following ability. All models within three inches, you roll, a, you roll a d6, on a four plus they take one mortal wound. You add two to this if it's a bike, a vehicle or a monster. Also if it's a vehicle or a monster, they don't suffer one mortal wound, they suffer four mortal wounds instead. Cladestine. When the Redactor Saboteur is in area terrain, it cannot be targeted by an enemy unit with shooting unless that enemy unit is within 12 inches of the Redactor Saboteur. Also, any shooting it needs to reduce the hit roll by one when targeting the Redactor Saboteur. Biophagus. Still power 2 and 40 points. Its characteristics are unchanged from the previous codex. Injector Gourd is similar but instead of inflicting mortal wounds, it works like how the heavy rock cutter used to work. And you roll a d6. If this is greater than the model's remaining wounds, the model is destroyed. Chemical vials are new. And are a grenade with a 6 inch range, strength 1, AP minus 2, and damage 2. And always wound on an unmodified two plus but this excludes vehicles or titanic units alchemicus familiar can be used once per battle and increases the range of the twisted experiment action to 18 inches its points have dropped for the familiar from 15 points to 10 points 
genomic enhancement allows the biophagus to perform the twisted experiment action. At the end of your movement phase, select a cult core or aberrant unit within three inches that does not have a genomic enhancement. The action is complete in the movement phase and as long as the unit remains within three inches of the biophagus. You choose the enhancement for aberrant units, but if this is but this is chosen at random for cult core units. The genomic enhancements are enhanced muscle culture, arm penetration is improved by one in combat, enhanced aggression in combat, unmodified hits of a six generate one additional hit. Enhanced resilience. This works much like the old bestial vigor ability. A sustained wound is not lost on a 5 plus on a roll of a d6. Achilles Ridge Runners. Now these remain 4 power per model, however their points, in, points have increased from 70 points to 80 points per model. However this does include all of their war gear and weapons. In terms of characteristics, their toughness has gone from 5 to toughness 6 and their leadership value is now 8. We've also seen some changes to the Ridge Runners weapons. The conventional missile launcher has now gone and this has been replaced with the Achilles missile launcher which is a 36 inch range, it's heavy 3, strength 6, AP minus 3 and damage 3. So quite a strong weapon. The heavy mining laser that has now got the blast ability and the heavy mortar this strength has been improved from strength 5 to strength 6 and this also has gained the blast ability. Now the war gear for the Achilles Ridge Runners has changed. Flare launchers no longer allow you to ignore wounds on a 6 and instead enemy units that declare charges against the Ridge Runners now minus 2 from their charge roll unless they're already within engagement range with the Achilles Ridge Runners. Spotters are very similar, they still increase the range of the Achilles Ridge Runners weapons but instead of increasing it by 6 inches they now increase the weapons by range by 12 inches. Survey augers again very similar, they still allow the weapons on the Achilles Ridge Runners to ignore cover however this now has a limited range of 24 inches. The Achilles Ridge Runners abilities are very much unchanged, Explode and Scout work the same way as they did in the previous codex, however Achilles Ridge Runners are crossfire units so they get to use the crossfire ability. Atalan Jackals, now these have had some nice changes. The power rating has changed. For four Jackals it's down by one to power three increasing to power 6 for 5 to 8 jackals, with each wolf cord included adding plus 1 power. They are down 2 points, 12 points a model, with wolf cords down 1 point to 24 points per model. The unit size is down from 12 to 10, with 8 jackals and 2 wolf cords possible. The Atlan Jackal's attacks have increased by 1 and their save is now a 4 plus. War gear is now more limited but generally much improved. Atlan Incinerator is now an assault weapon. The mining laser is unchanged but is now 15 points where previously it was 5 points. Atlan's small arms are new and the main weapon of the Atlan Jackals. It is a 12 inch range pistol with or pistol 2, strength 4, AP 0, damage 1, so basically pistol shotguns. The demolition charge is down to 5 points. Atlan power weapons are new and combine all the previous melee options. They are strength plus 1, AP minus 2, and damage one 
and a three points per model. So very much worth it in my view. Their abilities have changed. Skilled Outrider means enemies subtract one to hit rolls against the Atlan Jackals. Jackal, this allows the unit to shoot and charge in the same turn they fell back. Raiders means enemy units within six inches of the Atlan Jackals are treated as exposed for that attack. Scout. Before the first turn, if the unit is not set up as concealed, they can make a 9 inch move but must remain 9 inches away from enemy models. Atalan Jackals also have the crossfire ability and are a core unit. The Goliath Rock Grinder. Now, this is the only heavy support option in the entire Gene Stealer Cult Codex. Its power remains at 6. However, its points have increased by 15 points to 110 points. The characteristics have also changed. Its movement is increased by 2 inches across all tiers. Weapon skill is now at plus 3. Leadership is 8 and its save is improved to 3+. Plus. The Rock Grinder's weapons have also changed. The Cache Demolition Charge is now at flat damage 2, where previously it was D3 damage. Also, it has the Blast ability now. The Clearance Incinerator has seen a range increase. It is now at 15 inch range, and its strength has also increased by 1 to strength 6. The Heavy Seismic Cannon has undergone quite a few changes, similar to its lighter counterpart. For the Short, for the short Wave, it's up 2 strength to strength 6, and an AP has improved to minus 2. While the Short Wave has increased in range, range 24 and the AP again has also been improved this time to AP minus 3. The drill dozer blade has also been tweaked. Its strength is down to plus 2. Its damage is also now a flat 2 damage where previously it was D3 damage. Its ability has also changed a bit. You now get two additional attacks on the charge rather than previously where it was D3 additional attacks. Now looking at the abilities of the rock grinder the Rugged Vehicle ability has changed, where previously, on a roll of a D6, a 6 would ignore wounds, now you minus 1 to the damage characteristic to a minimum of 1. Also, interestingly as well, the Rock Grinder gets the Crossfire ability. The Goliath Truck. Now this is the only transport option in the Gene Stealer Cult Codex. Its power is up to power 5, and its points have also increased by 15 points to 90 points. Its characteristics have also changed. At tier 2, its movement is up by 1 inch to 9 inches. Its leadership score is now 8, and its save has been improved to 3+. plus. Now, the Cache Demolition Charges and Rugged Construction, that's just been previously covered in the Goliath Rock Grinder part. So see, just see that previously if you want to see those rules. The Goliath truck also has crossfire, which is quite interesting. Again, be a neophyte vehicle, that, that's why. But it's nice to have that. This is just a quick look at industrial weapons. Some weapons in the Gene Cult Codex are characterised as industrial weapons. These can gain benefits from stratagems, abilities and creeds. I have placed a list of these industrial weapons on screen. This has broadened the theme from the previous mine weapons list and has incorporated many of the Atlan weapons. There are no surprises with the weapons included on this list and there is a great potential to extend and enrich this theme in the future. Now, just far end, I'm just going to summarise what the thought of the Codex and then put some of my own opinions out there. There's lots I like about this Codex. Certainly, I love the cult section. The creeds and those civic stratagems, psychic powers are brilliant. The relics as well. 
they really help and improve gene seal occult and really help with people who are it really complements people's play style and if one of those cults, specific cults doesn't match your play style there's the myriad cults so you can select those ones and try and you know find new ways which suit your play style the crossfire rule as well as the summon the cult rule both great additions which give both durability and increase in firepower they're two things that re cult really needed their combat which did need a bit of freshen up they were seen previously in 8th edition as a specialist combat army yet in 9th edition they've been absolutely destroyed in combat by Dukari, by Blood Angels, White Scars and others this does not address that output in combat to, to those standards but they're still much better in combat now Gene Stealers and Aberrants have been boosted up and Acolyte is still very strong as well as the influx of new stratagems and industrial weapons I really actually like the industrial weapon theme I think there's a lot to build on there but all that together just makes the cult much more competitive and that's what this is generally this general course is generally about making cult more competitive there was a few little niggles I've, I've already have with this I, I say niggle it's not too bad these are just things that I a little bit annoying I think could be improved but at the end of the day they don't change me change my opinion too much first of all is pure strain gene steals which I think overall they have been improved you know tenfold extra attacks better better weapon skill just makes them so much better also vulnerable save is better but the fact that they're not a core unit it's just gene stealer cult it's a gene stealer army and yet the pure strain gene stealers are not core I can see where they're coming from the gene stealers are the last part of the um of, of of the brood cycle so i can see how they can be more elite and therefore not core the core is very much focused on the neophyte and the acolyte hybrids it's very much a hybrid army not a gene stealer army i get that i just thought pure strain gene stealers probably should be core the other thing is the icon ward i really like their abilities i like the fact it gives summon the cult to cult core units but it's that thing in cult core units metamorphs neophytes and acolytes all cult core but they get to have their own banners and where the banner for and the aura effect from the icon ward does boost this and give you a much more likely event that you're going to get the maximum increase it doesn't benefit many other units only the unit it does benefit is the atlan jackals but they're bikers they should be out doing other things, hitting and running, not being near the icon ward. Where aberrants and pure strain genesis could benefit from this. Since they're the only two other infantry units actually in the codex, they could have benefited from this and they don't. Again, it's not a huge issue, it's just a little thing. Another one is one of my favourite units, strange enough, is the Goliath truck. And that's gone up 15 points. I don't know enough of the point values of other um, transports. But I know things like raiders are not much more expensive and they can fly, avoid cover and they get 5% vulnerable as well as other abilities where the Goliath truck is a bit more box standard. It's got it's tough, it can withstand hits and it gets your, the well, guy yeah, use the units, but it gets your combat units out into the open, out into the open without being destroyed. So it's a great unit. I just think 15 points was a bit too much. It has got an imp improved saving throw of three plus as well but maybe a five point increase maybe ten point increase i would have been not thought another hero there about but 15 points just feels just a little bit too too uh, excessive now the bigger problems i have with this codex is first of all brew brothers i can't see now how you can feasibly take brew brothers to have a separate detachment cost you a minimum of two command points they don't get conceal. They're no longer objective secure. At least the base Brew Brother, which would be the guard unit, is no longer objective secure. And since the principal use of them before was to screen, which you still can do, and to spread out, but also to just hold an objective. They can still do that, but they're no longer objective secure. And also then to just move them around and bring out places and to do actions and to get secondary objective points. And they can't really do that because they don't get conceal. 
so they're, they're limited. They are there to give flexibility, and you can give the, you can give Gene Stillicolt a Lima Russ, a demolisher, or as one of my friends has said, just put a, a Bane Blade on, job done. To be fair, Bane Blade job done is, is a pretty good analysis. <laughs> But, and while they do give the flexibility, you can only take 25% of the points value or power value, otherwise you can't use crossfire. And since crossfire is such a good rule, I can't see you wanting to not use that, just for the sake of brew brothers. And again, a base brew brother unit is 55 points. The 10 neophytes who have crossfire and conceal, as well as they get creed bonuses, 60 points. There's no real... Um, competition and the other point I want to raise again which is which is um, very much related to this is choice Gene Steeler Cult do not get choice there is with all the data sheets removed seven data sheets have been removed and only one put in and okay one was the tectonic fracture which is a fortification that that doesn't I think influence anything being taken out and the Redactor Saboteur, I'm not having a go at I think that is a good addition. I like that character. A character that can do damage to both vehicles and monsters, as well as that set of explosive places. Who doesn't want to blow things up? Fantastic. I think it's a great addition. But it's a character. Gene Silicon have far too many characters. And a lot of them are very cheap and buff units. They're good. I'm not, again, having a go at them. But the choice is limited. There's only two troop choices in the Codex. And they're the, so far, they're, they're the only two objective secure choices. Now, you are going to base your army around Neophytes and Acolytes. Again, brilliant units. I'm not having a pop at them. It's just there's a lack of choice. And there's only three core units. And in total, there's only seven units which are more than one model. One of those is the vehicle unit, the ridge runners, and one of those is the bikes. So you're left with just five. Just five actual infantry units three of them are core being the metamorphs the neophytes and the acolytes and out of that out of those five only two of them are troop tracers so i do think they could have put more into this and i understand with looking at other releases they're generally putting a couple of characters in and that's it it's more of an updated rule set it's not all hot it's not an overhaul but they just need that bit of choice those loss of brood with the data sheets Going to a separate detachment just leaves the codex feeling a little bare. But that's enough of the mourning anyway, because there's no reason to mourn. This is a very good codex. It's not a great codex. It's not an overpowered codex. It's not like what Dakari have or Admech had when it first came out before the points increase. It's not going to put up and absolutely destroy most armies and be top of the meta. Unless there's a big loophole with the crossfire roll that I'm missing, which is which is possible to be fair. But it's a very good codex and it makes cult competitive. And let's face it, if you're a cult player where you're faced with the opportunity with the option of being eradicated, discovered and eradicated by the populace, or eradicated by your gods, being competitive is as good as you can really hope for. <laughs> now, when I look at what this codex offers, it does offer a good story. The Crusade rules are fantastic and that's why I'm going to do a separate video. I don't know when that'll be, but I will do a separate video just looking at those Crusade rules and and seeing what can be used with those and where, where you can go with it. Because the idea of going up a planet, arriving, going through those brood cycles and taking over the planet and infecting nearby systems, that really appeals to me. And that story element is what this codex gets absolutely spot on. The story side is very, very strong. Also, with changing from playing mining to an industrial theme, to me, that, again, gives a lot of possible options for the future. I mean, just think of having industrial machine, like a big power loader or a giant bulldozer or excavator is an option of, of the, for the um, cult. But also nostalgia, which is the reason why I picked cult, is because nostalgia is a big part of that. And in the past, acolytes could be upgraded to be psychers so maybe a psychic unit for um acolytes that that raw options and certainly that industrial side you know rather than just the mining side brings a load more possible options in the future and maybe future supplements i don't know it'd be good to see where they go with that 
So overall, this is a good codex, a very good codex. It has a lot more for the narrative players rather than the competitive players. But hey, it's much better than what we had. It's great to be competitive again. And overall, I think this codex is good, very good. So there's not much to say other than thank you very much for watching and hear me for the last five minutes having a little bit of a rant but the rant is not really justified it is a very good codex thank you for watching please add any comments you have any discussion points anything you want to mention if there's any mistakes you want to hide that i've made in this video please do i'm only human i'm not a magus yet so i do, will make mistakes and i'll correct those as i can I have maybe put some edits at the bottom as I've been going along if I have made any mistakes. So please let me know those. Or any discussion points, or any nostalgia points, anything you want to raise with Gene Stuckle, I'm always up for the conversation. Nothing else to say, but if you have enjoyed this, please leave a like. Thank you very much. It's been great. I'll see you again soon. Bye.